Hi guys, welcome to another monthly video tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how I painted this cherry tree painting. To start off, I'm using an A4 canvas that has been preset by Procreate and then I'm opening the reference that we've chosen for this painting. Before I start with my sketch, I'm going to upload the photo of the reference into my palette. Once I've done that, I've got the colors that I'll be using in this painting. Now my first layer, I'm going to add my sketch. I've chosen the studio pen, I think, or the hard details brush. Really any pen will do on Procreate here. My main focus in the foreground of the painting is going to be the tree on the right side, the cherry blossom tree, and then in the background, I've got a couple of trees and the winding path that leads into the misty, foggy background. You can get as detailed as you want with this tree, as windy or not windy. You know, I'm trying to kind of convey the feeling of an old tree that's like kind of leaning into one direction and that's why it's got a bit twisty and knobbly bits on it. On the same sketching layer, I'm going to add the background trees in a second. I've also just wanted to say that a lot of this tutorial is left in semi-real time, just slightly sped up sometimes, but go ahead and feel free to skip any parts that you feel like you've completed already. At a later stage, when it's about detailing the leaves and flowers on the cherry blossom tree, I'll let you know when I've got a very long period coming up of just detailing where I'm not describing too much so you can skip ahead and I'll let you know to where you can skip ahead. As you can see I've already started on the rocks, I'm just adding a couple of rocks here and there in the background, there are really small ones that are kind of hidden by the bush and grass in the background. I think these are a really nice addition just because the more landscape elements there are, the more detailed obviously, the more realistic I feel like it can get, which I really love. Also, I'm not sure why, but I didn't record this part where I filled in the tree. But essentially on a new layer below the sketch layer, I've just blocked out the basic shape of the tree. And on this example that I'm doing now, the background trees I think you'll understand how I did the foreground, but I'm really sorry about that. I don't really know what happened. I'm using a second layer for the background tree so I can shade them in later individually from the foreground tree. I'm using the hard details brush and a lighter color than the foreground tree. I'm going in and just basically redrawing and blocking out the shape of the background trees. For the foreground tree, I used the hollow square brush as you can see by the jagged edges. As you can see, I have two different layers for the trees and now on a layer beneath everything else, I'm going to start with the sky background. Choosing the hard shading brush, I'm going in with a semi-light <laughs> blue color. Once I filled in the background, I'm going in with some more lighter and darker shades to kind of match the photo on the left. If you don't have the hard shading brush, I'd recommend any airbrush because the nice and like gentle way you can apply it just allows you to get those transitioning colors in as well. I'm adding some more vibrant blue in the middle to kind of achieve that blue that we've got on the left and I'm going to brush and blur it because sometimes it very nicely mixes together but in this case it didn't do that very much. So I'm going in with a slightly lighter shade to achieve that transition and because I've chosen a color that is slightly less saturated than I'd like it to be, I'd like it to be a bit more vibrant. I'm choosing the Hue, Saturation and Brightness tool at the left and then sliding it by 1% to the right on the Hue, as you can see at the bottom there. I accept that change and then I go in with the Smudge tool and smudge together what I've just painted in. The Hue, Brightness and Saturation tool is super helpful when you are not sure about your color choice and you want to see how it would look if it was slightly more blue or green. You can also change the saturation and brightness, which really helps if you have separate layers. Once I've smudged that out enough, I'm going in and adding a new layer on which I'm adding a super vibrant blue to the middle and then I'm using Roshan Blur to blur it out. 
I want the vibrant blue a little bit to the right, so I'm using the selection and moving tool to just move the whole layer to the right and then smudging out where you can see the transition. Just because I want to have a little bit lighter in the background on the left. You don't need to be too complicated with the background if you prefer not to, but I was trying to get it as right as possible. I feel like it just brings it to better together at the end, especially if you're looking at a specific painting or picture. I merged those background sky layers together and then I am created a new layer on which I'm adding the green grass background now. I'm leaving the middle bits free for the actual path which I'll be painting beneath that. So feel free to just block out basically where the grass will be at the end. My green here, when I'm blocking it out, isn't varying too much. I was trying to add a little bit more blue green in the background and I'm choosing a little bit more of the yellow, lighter green on the right background. But you don't need to reflect it too much at this stage because we'll be layering on top of that by a thousand times. So really, it's just for our own gui guidance, really. If you want to add lighter and darker because it will help you with the shadow and light later, then go for it. On the same layer, I'm also adding some foliage for the background tree on the right and the left. I'm also using the hard shading brush here because it's really fluffy. It feels really fluffy and you can build up on top of that really easy. I'm adding a second shade to the ones on the right, as you can see, which is a slightly bluer green because that will be in the shadow and the yellow green reflects where the light will be hitting it later. Now on a new layer, choosing that um, main color for the path, I'm just going to add that color to the background um, and to make sure that it looks more or less natural, choosing a smudge tool then I'm going into the foliage layer and the grass layer and I'm just going to smudge out the edges of the grass to make it look a little bit more natural. We'll be building up with the shadow of the path and everything later but here you can really define how your shadow is curving and winding around and how the edges will look like. I've chosen the hard details brush here because it smudges um, really, you can smudge really long with that, like pull it out quite a bit and you know diffuse it very well so I wanted to achieve that effect. On that same layer, I've added a little bit of shadow with the hard shading brush and then also I'm going to extend the path into the middle a little bit on the right as you can see here, just following the reference photo as well. Um, generally, I've created the path and a ground level that is kind of slanted as you can see in to the background it goes up to the left a little bit and goes downhill to the right. I'm going to be reflecting that with my shadows in the path later as well. Now on a new layer I'm going in with darker pink. I'm just going to add that with the hard shading brush again, just adding very fluffy and light background. I'll be pulling that layer below the actual foreground tree in a minute but I'm just kind of orientating myself by the branches where I want to have some blossoms sticking out. Now that I've pulled the layer below, I can actually see the background a little bit better. I'm going to be adding different shades of pink and reddish pink for the cherry blossom leaves, getting that variety in here. Um, essentially, when I'm thinking about adding blossoms, I want to make sure that I'm building from darker areas into lighter areas so that it looks bunched, if you know what I mean. So that's why my background is a lot darker and then I'm going to be building up into the lighter flower blossoms. Before I continue detailing with the flower blossom tree, I'm going into the background and adding some 
detailing or lighter colors to the trees in the background. Because they are quite dark, I'm going in and just adding with a texture brush some lighter greens. I've been adding this with the texture brush on a new layer, which is why it's not blending with the background layer. So my solution to that, because it wasn't looking very cohesive here, I thought I'm just going to go in and erase parts that I've painted in here now. And then I'm going into the actual background layer and um, adding my texture there, really. So I've erased it here and now I'm going back into the background, background layer and changing the color there with the texture brush and creating a bit more of a transition there with the colors. My general rule with painting um, trees and bushes and grass and everything for me really is you want the shadow parts to be bluer and the where it hits the sun or the sun hits the gra grass or whatever it should be a little bit more yellow to reflect the warmth. Um, and also the shadows are bluer because my skies are generally blue. It would reflect what other source of light you've got in there. Then the same is going to be for the actual cherry tree for me. I'm building up from the shadowy parts that are less saturated, less vibrant, less um, yellow and red, more purple into reddish and pink bright colors. I hope that makes sense. I mean, you'll, sh you'll see it all here, but I just wanted to let you know again that we are kind of following that um, basic principle. For now, again, I'm adding some more shadows in the background. I'm using the same shading brush here. And decreasing the size of the brush, I'm going in and just adding some lighter areas to the grass as well. Okay, I want to start adding my rocks and stones into the landscape now. I've set the sketch layer onto a higher visibility and onto the multiply layer, so it's a bit more visible to me. But because there's already a lot of detail in the painting, I'm just um, hiding some layers to be able to see the sketch a bit better. Everything bar the background. And then I'm going to just um, paint in the stones essentially with a darker blue color as my base. Once I've added the basic block out color of the stones and I've got the shapes in and that, I can hide the sketch layer again and create, or rather unhide all the other layers. I've now added a clipping layer to the actual stone layer and now choosing the hard shading brush I'm going in and adding the very basic colors that I see in the reference photo as well. I'm starting with the light patches because sometimes it's easier for me to work from light to dark, um, especially when I'm starting on a dark base. 
I sometimes get lost in dark colors and I can't really get lighter again because it feels too bright, if you know what I mean. In the foreground rocks, I'm making sure that I'm adding a not quite as bright layer and most steps of the way here, I'm going in with the smudge tool as well. On the smudge tool, I'm using the texture brush and I'm using the same here now for painting. The texture brush will give you a really nice guidance for the shape of the rocks or the rock texture rather. As you can see here, I'm trying several times to get the right one. And then I'm opting for the chalk brush to add those lighter details. From the light details then I'm working my way through the transitioning colors to make it sure that it looks a little bit more smooth. It doesn't have to be perfect at this stage because all the grass and the foliage around are still missing and they will be covering up quite a bit of the transition from the rock to the rest of the grass. There is about a two minute period now where I won't be any commenting anything, but it will simply be rendering. With the texture brush I now add a little bit of texture to the grass around, just pulling and pushing with the smudge tool a little bit and then I'm going in and just adding the first layer of grass detailing. I'm choosing the grainy detail brush and orientating myself by the colours on the reference photo for the lighter parts. I'm not going in with the brighter, brighter colour but I'm adjusting a little bit because I'm going to work myself from the middle tone section to lighter colors to make sure it looks a little bit more natural instead of just starting straight away with the really bright colors. I'm also using similar shades on the trees for foliage in the background. So if you feel like it's a good shade for something like this, like this is mid-tone detailing, I guess, then go ahead and just add those similar colors because the green is quite similar across the painting um, I feel like it's not problematic to just use it on both trees and ground. <laughs> I choose a really light color for the background trees on the right as well and then just add some more detail there. Then choosing a slightly darker color, I'm going to go around and add a little bit of grass here and there that isn't directly in the sunlight.
to make sure that that piece of um, tree isn't sticking out completely out of the picture I'm just going to smooth the edges into the ground a little bit with the smudge tool and I also continue to smudge out bits of the tree generally that are just sticking out a little bit too much and don't look very smooth With the texture brush I go in now and essentially diffuse what I've added earlier in the, to the background, not the foreground leaves yet, and then I'll do the same for the foreground leaves. This will just kind of provide us with more transitioning colors in between and because we're adding our detailing based off that, that will be quite helpful because we don't have to worry about all the midtones. I'm going to continue with the tree trunk coloring next though and orientating myself by the colors of the reference picture. I'm starting with a blue shadow and then working my way towards a yellow orangey front tone. I also like to use a chalk brush for the highlights here because it's not one smooth tree bark, but it's kind of bent and out of shape in some places. I'm going to add the highlights so that they don't completely go in one line, but they are separated in parts to make sure that my lighter colors aren't sticking out too much and the blue kind of merges in as well. I've just added a mid-range color. And now I'm going in with a really light color. I'm now going to continue to add a couple of mid-range colors to the actual tree trunk and thereby adding some more detailing slash texture to the tree. Next, I'm going to start working on the path. I'm just going to add some more vibrant shadows to the edges of the path that are in the sunshine. And then I'm turning to more beige tones where it's not quite that vibrant and making sure that the edges that are really dark kind of mold into that. For the shadows, as you can see in the reference picture, there are some shadows that are quite gray blue and I'm going to be adding those next also slanted in the same direction as the general ground is, um, just making sure I've got the right color. I'm going to pencil in those shadows for the foliage over there and then some long ones for the actual tree stems. Using the texture brush, I slightly tap out some of the foliage shadows in the background. But as you can see, it kind of goes everywhere, so I'm not going to do that too much, to be honest. And then I'm going to redraw it slightly. Now going in with a bit more of a muted grey, I'm going to add transitioning colours that are kind of around the shadows, so that really the light spots are the warmest and the shadows just kind of fall into place where it's less warm. Now going into the lower cherry blossom leaf layer, I'm going in and just tapping some more in with the texture brush. Then I'm changing brushes and selecting the grainy detailed brush to be able to get more precise forms down. I'm going to add some shadows for the cherry leaves. I push my canvas into the background as I do here, which is why I've zoomed in so close for you guys to see what detailing I'm doing right now. But I usually zoom out so much because it's much easier for me to add a lot of detail um, quickly because you don't have to worry about all the small detail in the beginning and you're just putting down your very rough and basic bigger detailing and then getting smaller and smaller. I feel like it's really helpful, helpful to distance myself from the canvas to see the overall picture more than the actual details. 
I'm now adding the cherry blossoms with a light color and then I'll be orientating myself by those to create my cherry blossom bunches. So we're going to work from the lighter parts then to the darker parts by choosing midtones that are very close every time to each other. You'll see what I mean in a bit. Again, if you variate the different red, purple, pinks, I feel like you get a much more interesting um, tree than if you just choose one color hue spectrum, if you just choose pink compared to reds and purples and everything. Now I'm going in with a slightly darker, still very vibrant pink and then just adding kind of very close to the bunches to create that illusion of them forming a bunch, if you know what I mean, like a sphere. Now that I've added some more detail to the cherry blossom tree, I'm going to move on and just add some more detail to the background. Make sure that I'm elevating the lightness in areas similarly across the whole painting. So the lighter I'm getting on my cherry blossom tree, the more light I want to make sure I'm adding to the rest where the light really hits to ensure that I'm building up where the sunlight really falls. Again, in this case, I'm going to be choosing very close lying colors to the ones that are already on the actual green layer um, and just kind of optimizing the vibrancy in parts by adding slightly more vibrant colors here and there and brighter colors or darker colors.
to make the grass area a bit more interesting, I'm going to be adding some flowers. I'm using the chalk brush here and I'm really sorry about the lighting change, but unfortunately that was nighttime and I didn't have a proper lighting source, so the orange light is distorting the colors a little bit. Um, it's not too bad because I'm not doing too much, but first of all, I'm choosing some orange colors for the flowers and then um, making sure that they've got some white tips so that they look like they're catching the sun a bit. I'm adding some more pink flowers on the sides as well to kind of match the, the cherry blossoms and then adding some of that color into the tree as well. Once I've done that, I'm adding a new layer and I'm choosing the overlay blending layer mode. Here I'm going to start adding a little bit of light and vibrancy. As you can see, I'm choosing an orange and I had a lighter yellow and I'm just adding to that to where the sunlight comes through the background. Then I create another new layer and I make it an add blending layer mode layer. Here I'm adding some vibrant orange light onto the path and where the sun comes through the distance. I also add some on the tree and between the cherry blossom leaves. The lighting isn't that great here, but you'll see what I've done in a second in normal lighting. Now I'm going to mainly be focusing on adding more details into the cherry blossom leaves. Using the hard details brush and orientating myself by what I've already painted, I'm going to be choosing colors that are very close but not exactly the same of the ones that I'm color picking and then adding them around to create the bunches again of the colors. The more transitioning colors you've got next to each other, the more it will look like you are creating something that has got shape and form. Some of these dots I'm actually painting as little flowers, but it's really up to you and I don't think it makes too much of a distance until maybe the end, because I will be covering this again and again with details in the next probably 20 minutes. <laughs> I've now switched to the square color picker palette because it just shows me more options of the dark and light colors. 
that are a bit more refined so they make it easier for me to choose the right colors here. Using the grainy detail brush, I'm going to go in and add some more brighter outline to the actual tree trunk where the light falls. I'm also adding a little bit more light to the root that's sticking out now and then I'll be adding some more shadow to really solidify the shape of the tree. Next, I'll be adding some more texture to the path by adding some grains of the different colors in other areas where there are different colors to make sure that it looks like it's very grainy and rocky on the road. Next, I'm going to take care of the grass that's kind of at the side of the road and make sure that it looks a little bit more cohesive with the rocks and the lighter parts of the grass. I'm also adding some more mid-tones of green everywhere to make sure that it looks a lot more natural than just a single color in one space, just having it everywhere and just making sure that I've got the flowers nice on the ground.
Finally, I'm adding some more white highlights to the different parts of flowers and whatnot and brighter, vibrant colors. And that will be pretty much me. After the fireflies, we'll have our painting. Of course, a step before the firefly for me is always adding some light. So I've added a layer in the blending layer mode of overlay and I'm just adding some orange to the cherry blossom tree and where it's super nice and warm in the background as well. As well as where the shadow is kind of crossing the path because that's usually where there is a lot of heat in between the shadow and the bright parts. I feel like that always warms up the paintings, which I really love. I'm just going to add a little bit of texture to one of the rocks with the rake brush from my set. I'm just going to essentially pencil over it very lightly and add these sort of scratch textures to the rocks. As you can see, they're very like um, long. And uh, yeah, and then I'm just kind of erasing parts of that to make sure they look a bit more natural. Next, I create an add layer. And then finally, with the light pen, I am going to be adding my fireflies. I'm adding firefly lights to the flowers, to the cherry blossoms, where the sunlight comes through the bushes in the background and in the dark parts of the painting to really bring out that light. I know it's been a bit of a longer tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've enjoyed creating your version of this or something different based on your well this as inspiration i suppose <laughs> i hope i explained it all right please let me know if you have any wishes any suggestions anything at all um and yeah thank you very much for your patronage i'm really happy with the end result and i really enjoyed creating this so thank you for voting for this one i really enjoyed it you can find the link below with the palette of this painting and the actual reference photo if you'd like to have that as well And here's the final painting. Have a wonderful day!